Okay, we are back for another episode of Beyond Barriers. Beyond Barriers is a conversation with leaders and community evangelists about the challenges of navigating an effective accessibility strategy. In these conversations, guests get to share their successes and setbacks of navigating their accessibility journey and specifically how they've overcome uh, specific challenges that otherwise could have greatly put disruption in, in that uh, effort. So my name is Brian Gavin. I'm the co-founder of Wally and today's host. And today I'm delighted to be joined by Jen Devins. Jen, Hi, thank Brian. you so much. Hi. Hi. Thanks for having me. Yeah, I was excited um, when we got to put this on the calendar. There's so much to learn and um, and talk about that. Um, why don't we jump right into things with just learning a little bit about who you are, how you got into the accessibility space? Sure. Yeah. So my current role is I'm a UX director at Google, and my, our team focuses on accessibility, product inclusion and equity, and internationalization. Um, my history, though, I started uh, way back in the day as kind of a, a standard user experience researcher and designer. And <clears throat> I had always been very proud of that role um, and working with product managers and engineers as being the voice of the user and uh, was very, very focused on, you know, developing key personas and just really understanding and, and doing deep research to understand the actual user needs and make sure, making sure that we're solving real problems. Um, and then uh, over the years, kind of trying out different teams at Google, um, in my personal life, my father started uh, developing Parkinson's and I was just watching him, uh, you know, struggle with technology as it was getting progressively worse. Um, and just realizing to myself that, you know, I keep saying I'm like the voice of the user, the voice of the user, and even seeing him use products that I helped design and struggling with that, I was like, oh, wow, I am not the voice of all users. And that really kind of struck me. Um, and then uh, it just happened that there was an opportunity within the space I was in at Google that they they had engineers focusing on accessibility, but they never had UX um, really dedicated in thinking about it. Like, how do we think about this from a design and research perspective? Uh, so I had an opportunity to start up an effort within a, a certain segment of Google. And um, while I was doing that, uh, it was a great experience. I was uh, I see at that point. Um, so I was able to really dig in and get some hands on experience, just trying to figure out from like a designer's mind, like how do you solve some of these challenges that, that we were putting out there just by not thinking about it. So obviously, you know, again, just uh, kind of the same standard protocol of Let's let's dig in there. Let's do user research, but obviously let's focus on people with disabilities and really understand like what is their experience using our products today and how can we help them? And then on the design front, I had to dig in and really understand various um, assistive technologies and just like the inner workings, like how how are they developed? How do they read the screen? You know, how do captions work? All just all the basics. Um, but again, it just it, it gave me this foundation to really dig in along with the engineers to figure out, OK, so here's how this screen you know, looks. But like what what can we do? How can we make it a more efficient experience for people that have to use a keyboard or, you know, um, the, the obvious things of when when the screen reader is reading it, like not make it too verbose, uh, say the the most important information first, you know, just like really digging in and understanding that. So I was fortunate, I feel like that I was able to start there and really get, you know, some hands on experience. Um, and at the same time, I, I also uh, happened to start losing my hearing, which was like, oh, interesting. And so I have uh, moderate hearing loss and wear hearing aids. And so just even myself, I was starting to just open my perspective and eyes to, oh, okay, even, yeah, our our tools today aren't great for people that might need captions and stuff. I think things have come a long way for that. But, um, but yeah, so it was, it was kind of a mixture of 
personal things happening, opportunities at work. And then about, uh, let's see, I think about eight years ago, I was able to move to what was then called our central accessibility team. That was the, um, the team that kind of developed a lot of the standards and uh, resources for all of Google Teams to use. And I was able to join that and then build up a UX team devoted to the space. I think that's so great hearing, I mean, Google as a prestigious of a technology and um, global organization that it is, that it has it has centralized, but also distributed the accessibility functions, right? Because pretty much in every conversation that I'm in, I hear standardization mm -hmm. is really something that every organization is challenged with, right? Um, in a few of the roundtables that I've sat in on, folks that join, everyone has, you know, when we've asked, well, who's, who's an expert in accessibility? And we get a lot of hands that are raised. Mm -hmm. And then we start to ask, well, what's it like in other parts of the organization? And it's oftentimes very hard to speak about what those strategies are because without a central, a centralized center of excellence, mm -hmm. that standardization in the, in the integration of the strategy, which you said this in the beginning, it was like, oh, well, we did persona identification before and we did UX research and we did, and obviously we have UI design practices. It's like mm -hmm. just incorporating this in. So I thought that was, that was interesting. And the, the personal effect, I mean, when, when that comes across anyone mm -hmm. um, born into the, you know, in, into accessibility uh, needs and, and challenges, um, or pretty much at any point in, in anyone's life, they're going to have the need. Um, you get firsthand exposure. Yeah. So I want to ask a question. Um, the product inclusion philosophy. I think that, I think that's great. It seems like it was some time ago that you did, and the teams that you work with realize that user experience, the experience side of accessibility, it matters. And I didn't hear you once say compliance, right? <laughs> um, yeah. So. What what was I guess where in your career which um, was that? But how did that aha moment come about and and become an initiative? Because I think that's mm -hmm. that's a that's a uh, a line in the in the sand that oftentimes is hard to cross over. Yeah, well, I feel like you know starting out as a user experience designer, our we're always pushing teams and uh, ourselves to to have high quality experiences, right? Like um, it's it's more than just it's functional, whatever the product is or the feature that we're working. Mm -hmm. And so I think kind of starting off on that, at that level or on that footing was, was useful. And then being able to see the results, like some, just some initial um, explorations we would do or, our actual feature development where we thought about the needs of people with disabilities early in the experience and seeing the outcome of that as a better experience for, for all users, um, like leading to just basic things like simplification of the UI or the um, terminology used within the, the product that is just, it's basic, you know, just you, I personally kept seeing like, um, that this was benefiting all users. And so just thinking again about <clears throat> the process where we go through as UXers and just all, all folks that are creating products, it's not just UX, but um, there, it, I, I guess in the end, I just kept coming back to, you know, accessibility design or inclusive design, however you want to kind of couch it is just good design. Like it leads to just good design and good, it's a good design practice. And so um, I know within, within my team and, and just folks across the company, we're always trying to show that, um, you know, starting on the edges, right. Um, and thinking of those more extreme use cases early and how you might uh, design something to, to meet those needs. Again, it really just, benefits everyone in, in the end. So um, I just, my whole philosophy, and I would say like our, our whole organization, um, we know that all teams are met with so many things they have to prioritize from privacy and, you know, accessibility and 
all these things that they have to take into account when they're building a product. And it's just like, the more we can kind of bake in thinking about the needs of people with disability into the existing process, like just the the better it is. And ideally that's where, you know, we'll still, re- we still want to be that center of excellence and the experts that know this stuff deep, but yeah. that's where we're hoping people just get that experience and practicing how to do this and learn as they go. 10 months into Wally's journey, I think in the last week, it's the first time I've been speaking with other leaders across various organizations that have spoken about curriculum at the collegiate level, now touching on accessibility. Because like you said, it's like, mm-hmm. if it's baked in, well, I don't know that I go back to my you know economics classes and economics for 410, whatever class it was, and say, well, I'm applying this specific principle. No, it's these these behavior, these behaviors, these, these thought processes and, and, um, that carry our way of thinking forward that now at the, you know, at the academic level, you see it being adopted and Mm -hmm. it's not as much of like this bandaid that you rip off. And it's like, well, now it's time to think about accessibility, right? Yeah, Mm -hmm. exactly. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, personally, my, one of my quests is to, get more of this thinking into academia too, right? For all the, the various programs around UX and stuff. Um, luckily, uh, I mean, there are, there are a number of universities that are doing that already. And there's programs like, or organizations like Teach Access that's doing a lot of that work, um, which is great. But I think there's there's always more that could be done. So when you, I, I love the term baking it into the to the process. The standards that you're working on, are, are these primarily internal standards? Because I know Google has a lot of external standards, design system, and other mm-hmm. consumer public facing um, resources and that can be applied. Where where do you sit on the, the focus of, of uh, what's offered? Yeah, I mean, we, so we kind of think about um, just, just thinking about the workflow of a product team and the various people and their roles within that. Yeah. And, and literally like, you know, even approaching that from a research perspective, like, okay, how do teams work? What tools, what resources, what standards, you know, do they use? Um, and then where can we kind of bake in what makes sense? So from the, um, from a design perspective, we do, we have material design, which is the, our our global and external design system. And we've been partnering with them for over 10 years now to ensure that their components, the written guidelines, um, everything within there includes accessibility and now inclusion and equity and and like digging more into internationalization. Like that, that is, um, it's the only way we'd scale our efforts really just thinking about, okay, what are the, the tools and resources and processes teams are already doing um, that uh, that we can infuse, you know, our our guidance um, or our guardrails, you know, whatever it is in there. So we focus on uh, material design. We also within within the company a few years ago, we had an effort um, focused on product excellence. And one of the things that came out of that was this. Um, it's not a novel idea, but um, critical user journeys, CUJs, which you know all the teams uh, have been um, have been focusing on defining those, mm-hmm. and then using those to kind of help measure the the quality of the experience. So, um, and measuring it for the most part by doing user user studies, and that's another area where as that program was coming together like i was in there with them saying like okay let's think about how do we make sure that the uh, people with disabilities perspective is being integrated in this when we define the critical user journeys as well as when we're measuring those and so we've developed uh programs around that that again is just as teams across google are adopting those they're also ideally you know thinking about these um these different different users my tagline on my, uh, my signature for my email is like, you know, there's no such thing as an average user. And that's the thing we're always just trying to (laughs) remind people like, yeah, we need to, you can't, you can no longer, (laughs) which I think we all are guilty of at some point, uh, you know, just rely on doing 
in-person user studies on the coasts, you know, <laughs> I'm like, yeah, East coast and West coast. Like we need to really push ourselves. Well, and the scale, right? You're, mm -hmm. you're reaching billions of users on the external front and internally tens of thousands. And, um, that's, I think like a really er interesting area of like opportunity for scale because it's, you know, the, some of the best feedback that I've received in my, in my career um, from product is to do those in-person focus groups. So how do you, how do you mm -hmm. scale that? One thing, um, just to kind of jump outside that topic, but potentially relevant is, I think it's very interesting that you're organized with the interna internationalization efforts. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, language certainly is an accessibility barrier, but it's, yeah. um, it's fair. It's interesting because some of the same taxonomies and structures that, and work that needs to go into internationalizing experience is, mm -hmm. you know, there's so much overlap. Yeah. Yeah. And that, that's somewhat of a recent um, change to our org, which uh, we're, we're really excited about, but I, I personally, um, so our, our org, um, our team's name is products for all, which I love. Like, and that's, that's a, again, also kind of new. Um, but it's, to me, it's just been exciting to see these various um, efforts come together because, in, in my opinion, it is really under the umbrella of um, inclusion and equity. And, like, you know, how do we make these experiences good and delightful, not just like functional again, um, to to everyone, you know, regardless of where you live, what language you speak, you know, um, other dimensions of your identity. It's It's been exciting to come together. Um, and, uh, and it, you know, there's a lot of work to do to think about, to think across these things a little bit more holistically, like how can we help our product teams, uh, approach this type of work in a, in an efficient way. So they aren't, we aren't coming to them and they aren't feeling like, Oh, I have this like well, huge checklist now of like all these, you know, people I need to consider and research with. And so that's that's one of I'd say the areas we're continually trying to evolve. And that that personally is what I'm really excited about because I feel like we are we are able to kind of push um and evolve just the the practice of user experience design stuff. Like how how can we do this a bit more? Yeah, well, and it's evolving, right? Like the the definition of the of how you study user experience, how you deliver um, mm -hmm. those happy journeys, it's it's ever evolving. Yep. So I think you've put a lot of good perspective on the successes. Mm -hmm. I'd love to hear some of the challenges of scale and implementation. Um, yeah. Maybe there is a failed mission to, <laughs> to that um, you you want to mm -hmm. highlight. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I well, the the one thing I was just talking about, I feel like is maybe uh, it's not uh, a fail because I feel like we're still learning. Still, but we are. Um, it is a it is a huge challenge, and one thing that we keep um, we're experimenting with. I feel like, and again, this is just like how do we make this approachable to teams, product teams that um, you know have to move fast. And uh, have again all these different priorities they need to weigh and take into account. Um, and so uh, we are. I just feel like we are continually trying to see, like you know, from basic things like just guidelines that we might create and make sure that those are holistic and consider people with disabilities and different languages and race and you know things along on those lines, um, uh, as well as just how we talk about it um to you know and and have like a consistent message and way to frame how all of these things fit together uh so that's that's one area that i feel like is is a ongoing challenge but an exciting opportunity as well um i'd say you know what another this isn't necessarily a scaling thing but i just feel like is in my experience anyway is somewhat unique to this space is that mm -hmm. um a lot of people that come to work in this space come out of like a, a really sincere, deep devotion um, or passion or personal experience, you know, for, for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. And um, I find I, I've definitely found myself in this situation a few times over the years, but where 
it's, you are just so devoted to this and want to see so much change and success. Um, and, uh, and are often met with, I wouldn't say, you know, a ton of pushback necessarily, but just again, kind of understanding the day-to-day priorities of different product teams, like, um, and oftentimes they may deprioritize the work, um, or, or just not do it at all because it's a rush launch or something like that. And it can be, it can be a bit, um, uh, disappointing, obviously. Um, it's humbling for sure when your entire energy and and mission and sense of belonging is, is question I maybe yeah yeah no it's it it can be it can be tough at the individual level and then also team level sometimes and so as a as a you know manager and leader I often am you know help I hope I think I'm helping people like remind us all of you know the successes we do have and like how far we have come and you know it's it's just I feel like uh that to me is a little bit different in this space and a just kind of an ongoing thing um, that can be a challenge at times, but just, it's just something I think it's important to be aware of, especially as a leader to kind of keep people excited yeah. and motivated, but also understand. <laughs> I'm having like these, like epiphany and flashbacks of just, you know, accessibility as a, is almost its own startup, right? Like yeah. you're managing technology um, and solutions that, globally various teams can leverage hopefully as natively as possible in their design process their code development process um in the ways that the information is presented to the end user Mm -hmm. Um, end user being maybe someone internally at google but also you know the billions of people around the world and so you have this startup product and and suite of solutions but then you're also out there advocating and championing championing um a topic that for those that are in it are some of the most passionate and um, strong-willed individuals that I've met and collectively a, as a group, mm-hmm. but you have, you're, you're, you're going out into these parts of the organization that, and I think you're, uh, you know, at Google, very, um, it's, it's in a very good opportunity that it is a part of the conversation, inclusive inclusivity, but yeah. if you're not at a major organization that takes it as seriously as Google and you're the lone wolf of uh, accessibility, mm-hmm. You got a lot on your plate to to juggle. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's, it it it's interesting the the aspect of it's a multi pronged approach, right? You're developing these guidelines. I'm sure. Um, I'm not sure if it's only Mountain View, but I remember going onto the Google campus and it's it ice cream sandwiches were like the best thing um, in in the in the freezer there of like, Hey, we, we want to ha- do something fun and collaborative, right. To bring everyone together about a topic, to expand our, our horizon and our thinking. Um, and then trying to globally represent these, it's, it's, it's no small undertaking. <laughs> yeah. 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 We've, um, you know, again, we, uh, I feel like we've had a lot of, um, we've been able to achieve a lot and it, like you were saying, it is a, a bit of a multi prong approach in that, um, you know, we, we certainly find that, uh, working with individuals, like the people on the ground building the products, it's like, as soon as you kind of, um, if, we, if we just did a demo, for example, of here's the experience, you know, somebody that's blind is, is having using your product. It's like, obviously light bulbs and you're just like, oh my gosh, you know, I we, yeah. we need to fix that. Um. And that that's extremely useful. But then, uh, you know, we've obviously learned over the years, too, if like if their leadership isn't bought in to make yeah. the time and space to do this work, then, you know, they can be as passionate as possible. But it's just it's not going to move the needle. So um, that's where, you know, working with leaders across the company to establish goals, um, you know, annual or quarterly goals that say like, hey, this is important. This is a priority. Mm-hmm. has been another huge effort across, um, not necessarily U- UX is involved, but we have a number of other teams um, yeah. and functions that help help with that, which is has really, yeah, um, paved, paved more of a way than we would have had otherwise. Do you ever get feedback? Um... 
from someone who's using an assistive technology, like, thank you, like this made a difference and. Yeah, we do, which is great. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's I not would imagine as large of an organization, but it's like, you know, you're talking about like, we just were having a, our company all hands meeting. And I think as a startup, you know, sharing incremental small successes is important and the big wins, but you know, mm -hmm. as a team, it's like that person that writes a thank you and just, it's like, yeah. you made a difference in my world today. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it's that, um, that is invaluable. And a lot of the, a lot of our work, and again, I, I wouldn't say this is just for accessibility, it's kind of across the board, but you know, the more user stories we can bring to the product teams as inspiration, not just like, Hey, this, you know, this could be better. It, it truly is like, yeah. um, uh, it, it can be very useful. And I, I do feel like the one, the unique aspect, maybe a little bit of this work that we're, we really try to focus on is, is like um, the kind of the, the deep impact it can have on even a, an individual's life. So we don't always just think of success as like, oh, we have, you know, this many people that have adopted a, a product. It's actually like, no, look at like the deep impact it, that this has had, like it allowed somebody to maybe get a job or just, you know, re-engage in their community, things, things of that nature, which we don't want that message to get lost because that's really, really important. Oh, the social and human impact that it has is, is huge. I mean, like you said, I mean, previously things may have been ignored um, just because of out of sheer defeat. Um, mm -hmm um or just weren't even accessible um from a technological perspective right that that now and and globally these have such varying levels of effect because of how widely the technologies have been adopted so as as we get towards the end i'm curious from your lens where and what are the biggest disruptions coming to accessibility yeah um i feel like there's two really um one is obvious, but um, AI, of course. Sure. Um, but maybe to start, I think the other one is is all the new regulations that have been happening and are coming down the pike. Um, obviously, yeah. there's the European Accessibility Act. There's a lot of state level laws um, that have been coming across uh, within the U.S. And, you know, while that maybe not be might not be a disruptor in the sense of like the solutions that are being developed. It's a disruptor. I feel like um, in, in our world and in companies world that we just, we have to take this and prioritize it even more and take it. Um, I hate to say the word like more seriously, but you know, we just, Next level. This, this has to be a priority. There's regulations kind of across the board. Um, and this is one area that um, it's, it's only going to increase. So um you know, essentially like one, you know, uh, I see that as a disruptor for people in the space in the sense of really needing to dig in and help our product teams understand what that actually means um, and how to help them meet uh, those, the like the new standards and things like that. So that's, that's one area. Um, and as hard as it is, it's also uh, exciting because <laughs> it, you know, we, we can harness that, right? And 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 uh, get get people to focus. Um, and then, like I said, the the other area is obviously AI, which um, I I feel like is just really um, I, I kind of see three kind of ways it's really uh, able to art like we're, we're already seeing it helping um, and just again like creating new areas of focus. So, um, I mean, the one is obviously how can we use AI or Gen AI or ML um, to mm -hmm. help with the, the tooling that we already kind of have in place that is around, you know, checking for standards. Um, on the design side, we're very eager to see like, how can we uh, kind of uh, understand potential accessibility challenges that are coming up early in your design phase. You know, I mean, I think we'll always have to have a human in the loop for some of this stuff, but yep. um, there's, there's a lot of exciting things there just, you know, to help us <clears throat> more efficiently uh, educate folks and, and for them to produce uh, like um, just accessible products. Um, 
the other area that's very interesting to me is the um is like how quickly again folks in this space need to understand and educate in teams and companies on like how to make ai solutions um accessible is, is one thing but then you know help how can we help develop models that lead to more equitable experiences how can we understand the potential negative impact of ai yeah. driven experiences and outputs um that's just that's obviously new i mean every this area is new for a lot of people and i think that's just the area uh it's new and we have to be we have to act fast um and kind of you know keep up with people that are working in the space so that we can prevent as much as possible um and then the other area that is just so exciting is like how can it AI help evolve assistive technologies or just, you know, general experiences um, in uh, in ways that we just couldn't before or maybe couldn't at scale. So within Google, you know, again, we've, we're very blessed um, to have, uh, just to have teams that have the opportunity to dig into this stuff and are passionate. So we have Project Euph Euphonia that's been out for a while now. Mm -hmm. um, and they've been, working for years now on finding ways to leverage AI to make speech recognition um, more accessible. Yeah. Um, we just somewhat recently launched, we have a, a, an app that's been out for a while called Lookout. Um, and uh, we recently launched a like image Q&A uh, feature on there where you could ask questions about what you're seeing on the phone and engage in a conversation. Um, there's newer things that were just kind of announced recently, Project Game Face, which is like an open source hands-free gaming mouse, um, which, you know, we, we were working on that in collaboration with um, with a number of other companies. But there's yeah. just, yeah, you know, like, it is very exciting where this all could go. Well, and it gets back to the personalization, right? At scale, mm -hmm. it was really hard to, you know, sure, you could have added alt text, um, right. but how someone needs to... How, how I digest the information and take in what's visually there um, mm -hmm. through images and text and how you do is probably slightly different, right? And, yeah. And, yeah. and so for AI to be able to dynamically provide that understanding is, is so powerful. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm sure the, the disruptions, especially within, um, within Google, are going to be more than what even 30 minutes could, could ever talk <laughs> about. But the social impact is just amazing, right? It's not just internally, how do you create the scale, which you, you know, you talked about, it's having an impact on someone's life, which I think mm -hmm. is like, in the end of the day, no matter whether you're a one person company or a yep. hundred thousand person company, every product and service has an impact on someone, right? And to mm -hmm. kind of keep that close to your heart makes an impact. So, mm -hmm. well, Jen, I, um, I will always like to wrap up and just ask, is there anything that we didn't talk about or, or is burning on your side that you want to close out with? Um, n not really. I mean, the, maybe the last thing, cause you, you just mentioned it is around personalization. And I feel like that is yet another area that um, we're starting to scratch the surface on and, and, and really think hard about, um, yeah. How can we, create a personalized experience that really learns, you know, the user's needs doesn't require, you know, a million settings to, to get to that. Um, but is also, yeah. you know, is a, um, provides a, a cohesive experience kind of, and, and this is maybe a bit Google specific, but a cohesive experience across the various products. And so how does that follow you all this you know, yeah back to the old terms of omni-channel multi-channel like yeah yeah, yeah the, the ability not so i don't have to set a million settings on my android is like yeah those changes where you guys are making advances to not have to do that is like mm -hmm. thank you because yeah. learn how i interact and learn you know how i how what i need and it's yeah very very good things well um jen thank you so much um i feel like i always walk away from these conversations learning so much myself and then everyone who's listening today will have taken away um a ton uh from what you've shared so th thank you again yeah thank you so much it's been a pleasure chatting with you <laughs> very good